Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just before 11 o'clock in Honolulu, 5 o'clock in New York. It is Wednesday, June 21st, 2017, and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. We have the precious metals markets trading modestly higher today. Gold currently trading up about $4 on the day. 1247.50 net change about three tenths of a percent now it is traded to a low of 1241.70 and just like yesterday and for the same reason as yesterday that number is critically important the high 1248.80 and of course we closed just about a dollar or so from the high and we had a modest gain a very very pleasant change after going through the last three weeks of seeing solidly lower consistent prices in gold over to silver silver also trading higher but i'm going to put it i'm going to check the unchanged category in terms of net price change 1642 and a half net change almost a full penny the low today 31 and the high on the day 49 and a half. So traders, here we are midweek in a multi-week correction. We are in the third week of a correction which really started at around $1,300 and has taken this market substantially lower and taken it to the 61.8% retracement at 1236. If you recall from a couple of weeks ago, once we had this defined correction uh, get underway, of course, we got out of a trade, I believe, what was it, about 78 was where we got out of our last trade. It was in two legs. First leg, we got, went long at 1225, but that's the first time we actually began to put up our basic FIB retracement of this last rally because obviously we needed to see the rally conclude before we could do that. And really, traders, once the market, and this happened really during the first week and the beginning of the second week, but on the first week, we hit a low that was at the 38% retracement. And so I felt, well, it's possible if we have some sort of a shallow retracement, that could be the conclusion, but there's no technical evidence of it. And then the following week, meaning last week, when we broke below the 38% retracement, traders, you know that that was when I put... 1245 1246 in our pipeline as our target for where we would look for gold to bottom this was based on one simple study fibonacci retracement a deep retracement of 61.8 percent well during this week we actually had the low on two occasions both yesterday as well as today breach that price point but on both occasions close above that price point and that to me is significant because it tells us that there is a real opportunity that we will in fact see some support come into the market as you notice i've just changed over from a weekly candlestick chart to a daily candlestick chart because on the daily we've added our 50 and 200 day moving average as kind of part of the technical mix that we are currently looking at to diagnose and ascertain at what point this market will bottom. And so we've got our $85 rally. We have our subsequent decline breaking through our 38%, of course, breaking through our 23%, our 50%. And then, as you can see on a daily candlestick chart, yesterday's market move actually closed below the um, average or the 61.8% retracement, but it closed above the 200 day moving average. Today, the market closed back above this 61.8% retracement, but the low was again equal, roughly at around 1241. As I said in my opening letter, that this type of price action doesn't guarantee that we found a bottom and that the market will not drift to lower pricing we could have a false breakout or a false sense or just some sh short covering being responsible for it if we take a look at what happened here we had dramatic price declines we then had that doji kind of a candle which is typical and found during key reversals and consolidation and that was followed by a sharp up day and at that point only knowing the data up till there and being above the 38 percent retracement there was a solid chance that what we were witnessing was a key reversal but that wasn't to be the case as the market 
market drifted lower the following week. In the same way, what I am under the belief is, is that although this does not guarantee that we're looking at a key reversal, if this is a key reversal, this is what it would look like. So this is the point we want to pay very close attention to. And traders, as soon as I get a technical study that really alludes to or points to a pivot, a key reversal, and typically we use candlestick patterns for that, I will issue a buy signal in this market. And traders, in other markets that we follow, the dollar certainly provided some tailwinds for the precious metals markets as we see them selling off lower by about uh, two tenths of a percent or 20 points, a 97.21. But more importantly, we can see that it has given up all of the ground gain in yesterday's trading activity. The low 97.18 and the high 97.46. I might have been a little bit too quick to assume that the dollar had found support and would move to higher ground. We're certainly not getting that indication today. Mixed bag in U.S. equities with the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, closing slightly lower on the day, about three tenths of a percent at 21,410. And then the Standard and Poor's also closing fractionally lower. I'm going to put this in the unchanged category again, 2435. But it's that little darling, uh, the NASDAQ Composite Index, the Tech heavy index that did close higher up almost three quarters of a percent at 62.33. Do want to take one quick look at one other market that has been catching the eye of many traders and that is this very, very sharp decline recently in crude oil prices. Crude losing another dollar per barrel or about 2.3 percent and currently trading at 42.51. And so traders, there's two markets that I want to quickly look at on the trending markets portion of today's report, the dollar and crude oil. Looking at a weekly chart of the U.S. dollar index, and the first thing that kind of stands out in vivid colors is the fact that over this last month in trading, each candle represents a week now, we have seen alternating candle color. We've got green, red, green, red. Now we're going green on this particular week, which absolutely signifies a consolidating market trading in a nearly defined range just before breaking one way or the other. Now, the fact of the matter is when we look at this area, the 78% retracement, which is, sits at 96.15, which has been really the level that we were looking at for potential support. We certainly have not broken it, but unless we break above 97.74, which is the 61% retracement, we can't say with any technical certainty uh, that this market has broken out to the upside or broken back down for lower pricing. We're right in that middle ground and for technical confirmation that we've actually gotten this market to break out of this defined trading range, we need to see it break above the 61.8 or below the 78% retracement levels. And traders, as far as crude oil goes, uh, trading down about a dollar, losing up over 2% on the day, a tremendous slippage in price this week when we look at these weekly candlesticks right here. We've broken below a 38% retracement, and that is where I believe significant support should have held. It did not, $44, $44.5 per barrel. At this point, my sense is that it is almost etched in stone that will go back to at least $41 a barrel crude oil, if not 40. If it breaks below this critical price point, I believe it will go as low as 37.41. That would be our next retracement area, a 61.8% retracement of the move from 28 up to $56 per barrel. Traders, as I talked about in the opening letter, as well as comments that we made as we pulled up our technical studies and charts today, we are seeing the first signs that we could in fact be seeing a conclusion to this three-week correction that we have all been going through. Now, it is uncertain as to whether or not ultimately gold prices will find support in this area. 
But what is certain is that if gold is to find support in this area, the basic framework of what we're seeing now is exactly what we would expect to see in a market which has been correcting uh, in a strong manner, finding some support, and then moving to higher ground. We would need to see it stabilize and really form that bottom. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. We still need a couple more days of higher pricing to confirm that assumption. But as I said, we can't be certain that that's going to be the outcome, but we are certain that this is how it would look if in fact gold prices were bottoming. We will maintain our neutral stance we are looking at a market that I believe is, has gone and hit the bottom, and I am just waiting for technical confirmation that we have a pivot at hand before issuing a buy signal. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.